Hey guys, what's up? This is JRP77 from JG and Games, and I'm going to be continuing my tutorial series on the Blender modifiers. Now, in the last tutorial, we learned about the Curve modifier, which allows you to um, manipulate an object based on a Curve object. And if I hit Shift A, just to show you, we have these Curve objects, and you can actually manipulate an object's vertices around a Curve. Um, in this one, we're going to be covering the displace, which is similar to the curve, except it does it in a different manner. So um, before we get started, don't forget to check out our website. There will be an annotation up there and a link in the description if all else fails. Don't forget to subscribe, because if you subscribe, you'll never miss a tutorial, because I always send out user notifications and stuff like that. And also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Google+. Instagram is at JGN underscore games. Twitter is at JGN games. And Google Plus is JGN games. So without further ado, let's get started. So for this, the cube isn't necessarily the best thing to use because the cube has think, um, vertices facing this way. They have vertices facing this way, this way, every different direction. So for this, we're going to use a flat object just because it makes the most sense. I'm going to hit X. I'm going to delete this object. I'm going to hit Shift A and add a plane. I'm going to scale this up to three. Sorry. And so now we should be set. First of all, we need to make sure that this has a material. So I'm going to open up my sidebar, just expand it. I'm going to go to my material and I'm going to add a new material. This won't work unless you have a material. I guess it could work, but I just suggest having a material or else it doesn't look as dumb. All right. So now we need to do two things. Now the way this works is we can actually use image textures, so just like pictures you find on the internet, and um, procedurally based textures. So I'm going to do each of them. I'm going to do this. This one's going to be called texture map. And then I'm going to add another one. This is going to be called image map. Alright, so now I got that. Now if I go ahead to my texture map and I set this to, I don't know, distorted noise, and then I go to viewport shading rendered, you'll see that it puts all these pink things on there. We do not want that. We want to have this clean. So we just simply uncheck this and uncheck this, and these will not be a part of our scene. So now that we've got that, we have two different textures we can base this off of. I'm also going to just bump this back down to image or movie just so that both the same. All right, so now we need to create add the modifier. So I'm going to go to modifiers, add displace so now you'll see it does this don't be afraid of that it's very annoying i'm going to move this down to the mid level so that when i add strength and intensity it stays at that midpoint all right so now let's go ahead and go to texture let's use the texture map and you'll see it moves it down you can always just move that back up to 0.5 or wherever you want and now you'll see that the strength moves it up and down but that's because the reason it's like this and the reason it goes up when there's negative is because if you look at the image, the image is black. On bump maps, black means the lower parts. Anything black is lower than the white parts. Now, because there's no white, everything is lower. So, that's the best explanation I have of that. So, now we need to add something to this to make this a bit more interesting. Let's go to type, and I'm going to do, uh, let's see, noise. No, not noise. V uh... Do she? No. I just do clouds. Clouds look cool. I'm going to change the size up to about 0.5. And then. <coughs> um. Like harden. <coughs> Sorry, guys. You could set it to color, but for this, we need it to be grayscale. All right. So now that we have this on our texture map, you'll see that something happens but kind of not and that's because it's trying to assign all these low points to these four vertices now if i've talked about it in the past um the displace modifiers work based on how many vertices you have now because we only have four we can't really do anything with this so if i subdivide this four times oh uh, yeah and now you'll see that it starts to become this is all based on this i can even tap and i can subdivide this twice more and it even becomes even more detailed but I personally like to have that. Um, I'm going to just hit one and move it up. So now you'll see that that's pretty much all it does, but we're not limited to these clouds and stuff like that. Um, before we go into the image, I'm just going to discuss these. Mid-level is basically where your object is, um, like with the, um, the origin of the object. The strength is how strong it is. You can make it really strong 
and I guess if you recalculate the normals, you can make something look really cool. I'm going to keep this at 0.25, just because that gives you a nice clean look. Um, technically, if I were you guys, I would not use this as terrain. You can, and you can apply it and stuff like that. It's good for procedural terrains. But other than that, I highly suggest not doing so. It'll just make your life a whole lot easier. You won't have to worry about details and all that variables and stuff. So now we've got that, let's do image. So I've actually found, a, um, I just Googled bump map. And this is basically what a bump map is. I've been talking about it, but this is what it is. So this is without a bump map. Notice how it's so flat. Like you can see that there is detail, but it doesn't stand out. Note, but on this one, this one has a bump map, and you can see that it's got details and stuff like this. All a bump map does is it determines where the light spots and the dark spots of the object are. It just, it's just a position. Um, there are two types. There are these, these blue ones, which are used for, um, I think those are called normal maps. And then there's these, these black and white ones, which are called, sorry, um, bump maps. So bump maps, normal maps, essentially the same thing. So now let's choose one of these. Um, I found one that I really liked and I think I downloaded it. This one looks cool. You could do this one, but I just don't see there. You know what? Let's try it. I want to try this. I'm going to hit um, save image to downloads and I hope that worked. And now when I go back to my textures and I go to my, um, I'm on, I'm going to go to my material. I'm going to go to image map. I'm going to open, I'm going to go to downloads and click on this calendar so I can see the newest one. I'm going to click on IV bump. Now I see it gives us that and now I'm just going to click on this, go to modifiers and change this to image map. Um, you'll see that because it's, it's kind of annoying, but you get the idea. Um, because it's a bit small, um, it's not just that it's small, it's also trying to assign all these vertices. So if I subdivide this like three more times and then I hit tab, You'll see that it's still kind of crazy, but if I bump down, see, it's just, you very well could use this, but personally, I would just stick with a normal one. So I found another one that I actually haven't tried yet, and I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to go to open, and I'm going to go to calendar, run downwards, and it was this one. This one looks cool. It's kind of a fabric color. Um, let's see if I can, the image, I can make this clip. So you'll see that it goes down right there because the image is not big enough. We can set the crop minimum to something. I don't know. We could set the we could set it to just checker. We could set it to clip the cube. We could set it to repeat. That's what I'm going to keep it on. And I'm going to set it to mirror. And you can see that it's kind of like finding out what works, what doesn't. And that looks pretty fabric-like. If I go to 21, that's fabric-like. Now that actually looks like you see how cool that looks? That is cool. Um, so that that's one easy way. If I hit tab, ooh, and I subdivide it twice, you'll see it screws up. Sad, really. But if I bump that back down to one, actually, this needs to be two because of the image. Actually, two. Whoops, one. It's playing around, really, finding out what works, what doesn't. But most of the time, you'll want to have... Something like that. That's pretty good. I'm going to jump back to my original subdivisions like that because that looks so cool right there. And so, yeah, that's one way to get like a fabric like texture um, with normal maps. Thanks for watching. Um, that's basically all there is to the displace modifier. Um, there's not much you need to know. Vertex groups, do not worry about those. That's just certain. That's if you wanted to set certain vertices on here to map. So like if you made a vertex group out of, I don't know, those vertices, vertices in the center, then this modifier would only apply to that, which is cool. You could get some really cool effects with it. But honestly, if you're not just a beginner, don't worry about it. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you like this tutorial, don't forget to check out our previous Blender Modifiers tutorial series. Uh, not so serious, this is the tutorial on the curve modifier. Um, in that one, we talk about how you can displace a modifier by means of a curve object. And that was actually my favorite modifier right now. I use it for so many things, and I actually show you guys how you can make some things that I've used before in Stormstrike. So, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys next time, hopefully with a mic.